This video is a review of the symmetry and group theory chapter in the physical chemistry playlist. We start by defining symmetry operations, including the identity E, which does nothing, leaves the molecule unchanged, the inversion, uh, inversion I, where we invert the molecule through a center, XYZ goes to minus X minus Y minus C, sigma, reflection across of a plane, uh, a proper rotation axis, Cn, where we rotate by 360 over n degrees, 180 degrees for C2, 120 degrees for C3, etc. And Sn, an improper rotation axis, where we first rotate by 360 over n degrees, then we reflect through a plane which is perpendicular to that axis of rotation. So these symmetry operations come from symmetry elements, which are similar. We have E, which all molecules have, the identity element, an inversion center, something which we can invert through, a mirror plane through which we can operate the reflection, a rotational axis through which we can operate our rotation, and an improper rotation axis, similarly, which we can do improper rotations through. Now using these operations, we can define groups. Groups have four properties, that their operations have a product, that the product is a member of the group, uh, that their multiplication is associative, that the successive operations are associative. They have an identity, one that an operation that leaves another operation unchanged, and all operations have an inverse, such that if you apply the inverse to an operation, the resulting operation is identity. So the symmetry elements of a molecule form a group called a point group. These point groups have names like D infinity H, OH, TD, C2V, D3H, D6H, names like this. So we have examples of molecules which fall into these various point groups. And we have a flow chart which determines given the structure of a molecule, we answer some questions about it and answering yes or no to whether it has those particular structural properties or symmetry elements, uh, what point group it ultimately falls into. The symmetry elements of a point group also multiply together, together in these kinds of tables called multiplication tables. So for any, any group, we can define the product operation of two symmetry operations and what operation is the product of those two. These operators can also be defined in terms of matrices, which reflect how they act upon a given vector, which is defined in three-dimensional Cartesian space. So the matrix operating on this vector gives a result which is consistent with the, op the symmetry operator uh, acting on that vector. So we get things like identity operators, which form identity matrices, and there are rotation matrices, reflection matrices, improper rotation matrices, etc. We have things called irreducible representations, which are basically the operators of a point group represented in the matrices or the arrays, which are the minimal form, which, which comply to the group multiplication tables for that, for that particular point group. So these irreps have names like A and B, or E or T. They might have subscripts like one, two, or three. They might have subscripts like G and U and they might also have superscripts like prime or double prime. So these irreducible representations come together in a thing called a character table. There's a character table for every single point group, and we have the irreps and their behavior under each of the opera symmetry operations of that given point group. So we have the what ends up being the trace of the, of the irreducible representation of that particular operator in that irrep becomes its character, and these characters come together to form a character table. We can take the reducible representation, which we get by acting on a set of objects with all of our symmetry operations, and that reducible representation using a character table, we can turn into an irreducible representation, which is a sum of the various irreps of the point group. If we have a given set of orbitals, for example, of a molecule, we can figure out the linear combinations of them which comply and form uh, the various irreps of the molecule by using generating operators. For example, if I use the generating operator for the B1 
IREP, and the C2V point group for water. I can take the 1s orbital on the hydrogen, apply this generating operator, and get that the uh, B1, the B1 representation of this particular uh, orbital ends up being an anti-symmetric combination of the two 1s orbitals on these hydrogens. So these are useful for generating specific uh, symmetry adapted linear combinations of various objects that we're interested in, like orbitals. And finally, we do an example, including uh, using the vibrational modes of water, represented as specific arrows in Cartesian space. We calculate the reducible representation of those by seeing how they behave under the symmetry operators of the C2V point group. We note that the that's, this reducible representation is a sum of the translational, rotational, and vibrational degrees of freedom of the molecule. And then we break that down to determine that the reducible, the irreducible representation of the vibrational modes of water, for this case, ends up being these particular IREPs. And then we look on, on the character table and show that all of these ir, all of these modes, because they belong to these IREPs, must be both IR active, infrared active, and Raman active.